Remember that special case of the chain rule where if we have y as a function of x raised to a power of n, then dy by dx is n, leave the function in the brackets alone, reduce the power by 1, and multiply by the derivative of the function in the brackets. What that means is the antiderivative or the integral of this is f of x to the power of n plus that constant of integration. Now if we adjust this slightly, so instead of and n minus 1, we'll replace those with n plus 1 and n. And then if we divide both sides of this equation by n plus 1, so now I have a method for integrating a function of x raised to the power of n multiplied by the derivative of that function. And it's the function of x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and then plus c. Now just take a few moments to follow these steps and make sure you understand where this equation comes from. So now we can say that if dy by dx is some function of x raised to a power of n multiplied by the derivative of the function in the brackets, then to anti-differentiate, y is the function in the brackets raised to the power of n plus 1 all over n plus 1 plus c. Or to use the integral notation, the integral of a function of x raised to the power of n multiplied by the derivative of that function with respect to x is the function of x raised to the power of n plus 1 all over n plus 1 plus c. But this is only useful when what we're trying to integrate is of this form. So it's a function raised to a power multiplied by the derivative of that function or a scalar multiple of that expression. We'll work through several examples so you can see this formula in action. As always you should pause the video and try the examples yourself before watching my solution. So in example number one we want the integral of x plus 3 to the power of 5 with respect to x and so our f of x is x plus 3 the derivative of f of x is 1, so that actually doesn't change this expression, and then n is 5. So we can use the formula to say that this is x plus 3 to the power of 6 all over 6 plus c. Now in the second example, f of x is 2x plus 3 and f dash of x is 2. So using the formula we know that the integral of 2 2x plus 3 to the power of 5 with respect to x we know that that is going to be 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 over 6 plus c so we need to adapt this slightly. To get 2x plus 3 to the power of 5 rather than 2 lots of 2x plus 3 to the power of 5, we need to do a half of this. And so we need to half the result. So our final answer is 2x plus 3 all to the power of 6 over 12 plus c. Continuing on, we'll define f of x each time. So f of x is 2x plus 1, and the derivative of that is 2. So we know that the integral of 2, 2x plus 1, to the power of 4 is 2x plus 1 to the power of 5, all over 5. I don't want two of these, I want one of these, so I need to half this and half the result. So it's 2x plus 1 to the power of 5 
all over 10. Let's see. Now this second example is written as a quotient, so I'm going to rewrite it as 12 times 1 take 3x to the power of negative 2. And if I say that f of x is 1 take 3x, the derivative of that is negative 3. So substituting into the formula, the integral of negative 3, 1 take 3x to the power of negative 2 with respect to x is 1 take 3x raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power. But I actually need to multiply this by negative 4 to get the expression I want. So I want negative 4 of these, hence negative 4 of these. So simplifying, 4 over 1 take 3x plus c. Now in this example, if I say that f of x is 6x take 1, the derivative of that is 6, and so the integral of 6, 6x take 1 squared with respect to x is 6x take 1 cubed over 3. But unfortunately in this example, it's not a scalar multiple. It's actually multiplied by x. And so we can't use this formula in this case. What we would need to do is expand the brackets and then integrate each term. So this is 36x to the power of 4 over 4. Take 12x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus c, which simplifies to 9x to the power of 4. Take 4x cubed plus x squared over 2 plus c. This fourth example, however, is slightly different. If I say now that f of x is what's in the brackets, so 6x squared take 1, now the derivative of that is 12x. So substituting into the formula, the integral of 12x times 6x squared take 1 to the power of 2 is 6x squared take 1 cubed over 3 plus c. And this is a scalar multiple of what I have in the question. To get x times 6x squared take 1 squared from this expression, I simply need to divide it by 12. So I need 1 12th of this, and hence 1 12th of the answer. So the integral of this expression with respect to x is 6x squared take 1 cubed over 36 plus c. In this example, I'm given the derivative, so to find a in terms of t, I need to anti-differentiate this expression. a is the integral of 2 times 5 plus 4t. With respect to t this time, so we'll start by saying that f of t is 5 plus 4t. And the derivative of that expression is 4. So using the formula, the integral of 4, 5 plus 4t cubed, is 5 plus 4t to the power of 4 over 4 plus c. But because I only want 2 5 plus 4t cubed instead of 4 5 plus 4t cubed, I need to adjust this to say that I actually want half of that, so half of the result, and a is going to be 5 
plus 4t to the power of 4 over 8 plus c. Then I'm given the information that when t is negative 1, a is 1. So I can substitute in these values to find c, and hence the final expression of a in terms of t. 1 is equal to 1 to the power of 4 over 8 plus c, which means that c is 7 over 8, and my final expression a is 5 plus 4t to the power of 4 over 8 plus 7 over 8. Again, I want y in terms of x. I'm given dy by dx, so I need to anti-differentiate. Now, the derivative of what's in the brackets is 6x, so we can say that the integral of 6x times 3x squared take 1 to the power of 5 with respect to x. We know that that is 3x squared take 1 to the power of 6 over 6. Let's see. We actually need 72x multiplied by the function. So I need to multiply this by 12 and hence multiply the answer by 12. So simplifying, y is going to be 2 times 3x squared take 1 to the power of 6 plus c. And I'm given that when y is 100, x is 1. So we'll substitute in these values 100. So this is 128. And c is negative 28. So my final function, y is 2 times 3x squared, take 1 to the power of 6, take 28.